Chapter 1 Communication Radio slowly woke to the sound of commotion outside her window. She blinked open her blue eyes and turned her gaze past the window's shelf where she slept. It would be another few days before her parents were to arrive, so she knew the noise wasn't them. Her three servants were outside speaking to a tall feline driver of a cat carriage. Whatever the situation was, it looked urgent. The expressions on the two weasels gave away their concern about the news they were hearing, even while the lead servant, the only stoat, Stella, kept her features composed. This was even stranger than if her parents had come home early. Radio rose, deciding to investigate what the driver was telling them. The small, soft-furred feline jumped down from the wide windowsill and stretched her white paws. She extended her limbs to rid them of their stiffness from the solid night of sleep and arched her spine before she rose again. Her attention was caught by the vanity table across her room, the polished surface holding her collar in its stand, ready for her to start the day. She blinked once and took in a breath before she walked over to it. Radio knew that she was going to have to put it on before she went downstairs. It was part of her role as one of the nobility to present herself wearing the sapphire choker at all times. She found herself entranced with it, staring at the silver surface of the necklace, gazing at the bright gems decorating the collar in rows. Radio lowered her nose to touch the core gem, a beautiful center heartpiece, and took in a deep breath. Her tail flicked back and forth as she contemplated the role she was about to play. Sensing from both her parents' absence and the commotion outside, it would somehow be different today. Radio closed her eyes and slowly let out the air she held. That very thought made her take the moment to enjoy the peace of her room, before going down to see what was happening. The drumming of tiny paws belonging to her servants suddenly overtook the silence. Radio quickly jumped back as they whipped open her door, bringing the chaos to her instead. Miss Radio, there is dire news from the castle! Stella pressed, bursting into Radio's room with the two weasels closely following behind. Radio blinked away the cloudiness from her waking eyes to tell them apart, one sister being darker than the other when given a closer look. It's terrible, ma'am. The king, our lordship, has vanished, taken away by something dreadful, uh, unspeakable. Hannah, the lighter sister, whimpered, her eyes widening with every squeak of her voice. Radio backed away, shocked as the other sister, Leal, continued with even more news. Taken away by a mage, my lady. No one knows where it came from, but it succeeded in infiltrating the castle. It's so awful, ma'am. Hannah's paws looked like they were vibrating from her shaking. The lean cat took in another breath, holding it and breathing out through her gritted teeth. This wasn't anything like Radio thought the disturbance outside was about. She had assumed it was an accident with her sister or parents at the least with how the two burst in. What was going on? Radio didn't know how to ask, nor knew why they would tell her either. And uh, what does this have to do with me? We contacted your sister, the Frequency Star, my lady. The darker weasel walked to the other side of her. Radio blinked as Leal gave the star title to her sister, although she never referred to her with it. Radio was one of the nobility too, whether or not her parents decided to treat her like one. However, before she could address that, the lighter weasel pushed the offended thoughts out of Radio's mind. It's very worrisome, ma'am. Madam had no interest in the capital's request for her to investigate the wishes of the... of the mage, Miss Radio. Now it was Stella who approached Radio, further explaining. The driver said the duty would pass to the next akin of the house. That would be you, while your parents are away. But how... Can I do that? Radio asked, blinking to try and compose her shock. She had not once left the house without her parents. How were her servants so willing to foist her into a carriage to embark on a trip to the castle by herself to answer to the Council of Media? 
uh, why, why can't we wait until my parents get home? The rickshaw outside is waiting for you now, miss. Radio felt Stella rise up on her back paws to clip the collar around her young mistress's neck. The cat held up her chin as the smaller mammal did so. You know, if we could, we'd have them wait, but it's too urgent. We need you to go now. Stella finished before hopping down and running out of the room. Radio watched as the two weasels followed the stoat, calling out when she hesitated. Come, there's no time to delay. The feline blinked, then took in one more breath and exhaled as she followed the three servants. As she ran downstairs, she heard a noise from the parlor and skidded in her tracks to see what the source was. Was Frequency here? Radio assumed her sister turned down the offer in her own home. What brought her here this early, knowing their parents were gone on their tour? Obviously, she had no intent of visiting her younger sister, sending the sheltered cat off like a... Radio, please! Stella pressed, interrupting Radio's thoughts. The feline nodded and ran outside with the three instead of pursuing the noise in the parlor. The weasels and stoat led her to the carriage driven by a tall, lean serval mix. Radio blinked at his dark arms and tail. It didn't match the spots on his body, as though one of his parents had been a seal point or something. Just then, his piercing gold eyes narrowed into slits. Radio clamped her jaw shut and chose not to ask anyone about his markings, when Faith said, Oscillation will bring you to the castle, Miss Radio, and from that, point workers will escort you through the halls to make sure you're safe. The small mammal gestured to the carriage. Radio climbed in, looking back at Stella and the Weasel sisters with wide eyes. It was similar to her looking down at them from the top of the stairs on any other day, but this time... She was staring down at them from a carriage, and it was going to take her away. That very idea made a question come to Radio's mind. When would she see them again? She'll be safe with us, small one, the tomcat promised once the darker weasel approached the carriage cautiously. Leal nodded and backed away towards her sister again. Radio turned to watch as the two rose up on their back legs. We believe in you, Radio! They called out, making her smile. She kept her eyes on them as they ran back to Stella and waved to her. Come back to us safely. Stella lifted up her paws in apprehension. Radio shook her head, mustering a big grin for them. She hoped it wouldn't be too overwhelming. As long as there was always someone with her, she would have that at least. I will. She called back before she closed the door to the carriage. The three would have each other while she was gone, so they would be fine too. She nearly fell against the floor when the giant cat started the carriage moving. With a sigh, she adjusted her collar from its bumping against the bench and climbed up to sit for a while. Already, this wasn't a pleasant ride. Her gaze drifted towards the window, and Radio watched as her house and the servants became smaller as more distance was put between them. She sighed wondering when she would go back home, then looked back into the carriage. There was a pile of documents and files on the bench next to where she was sitting. She stared at them for a while, and then turned her gaze back out the window to look at her servants again. She kept her eyes fixed on the three to watch them go back inside, then waited until the door was closed. She folded one paw under her chest as she crouched down on the bench and opened the files with her free paw. Perhaps a bit of knowledge about the situation would clear up the rest of her worry. Upon beginning to read it, however, she could only come to one conclusion. All the information was kind of boring. Radio flipped through the pages one by one. The first few files were interesting enough. They explained that a mage impersonating the hired court jester had infiltrated the castle, holding a glowing cyan cube. It was speculated to be a replica of the mythical artifact created by the former leader of the land, before the overthrow and takeover of Media's current government. The information made Radio think of the story that her aunt, the studio star, told her when she was young about the overthrow of the mages. 
The former Magic Queen had a collection of artifacts floating around in different colors, but Radio had forgotten they were cubes. The next file was a historical report of the last attempt of a mage to promote sorcery and infiltrate media with treacherous propaganda. Radio was surprised the last sighting of a mage with one of the artifacts was a feline. Radio sighed. All the excess detail and reports were dry and dull, but there were just a few bits and pieces hidden within the repetitive words that made the information worthwhile to know, so she continued reading to learn about the feline magician in the hopes she could learn something interesting about the magic user. The mage was a long-haired calico with almost completely white fur. Radio read through the sightings with interest when she saw the photo of the feline. Apparently, the cat had started attacking patrols with white and cyan magic, along with a spider monkey of sorts. Last seen in the unending labyrinth across the crater valleys, the feline would lure the patrols and guards of media inside the jungle maze and use the strange twists of plant life and pitch black magic to ensure they never returned outside to media unless delivering a message from the Shadow Advisor, as the mage called itself, or the title given by media's council, Phanoscope, in an attempt to bring less fear to the followers of media. The fur on Radio's shoulders started to rise just from hearing the name, and she turned to the next file. The rest consistently called the cat Phanoscope, so she knew at least she wouldn't have to read a continuous confusion of names although she believed she had heard the title of the Shadow Advisor before, and whatever it had been, it was not a good or happy story. The mages sighted with a cube before Fantascope were actually a pair of two owls, and the artifact's color would fluctuate between amber and magenta. The two resided in the rich top mountains beyond the altitude the patrols could reach, and once again it was mentioned feline clouders and spider monkey troops were sighted near the area of the unending labyrinth, as well as the areas between it and the mountains. Radio's ears flicked and her eyes narrowed. It seemed as though the council may have had warnings or hints that these events concerning the king might indeed happen. She flipped back to the pages of the most recent attack and read that the jester mage was in the form of a spider monkey when it entered the throne hall where it assailed the king. Why hadn't anyone been there to stop a suspicious spider monkey from wandering about the castle? This all made it clear to watch out for strange primates. Radio took a deep breath and exhaled. Maybe this was why she was coming to the castle. To investigate and find the answers of why the mages inhabited the labyrinth jungle. And to find out why they continued to press this message with the cubes floating around with them. Perhaps the sorcerers were trying to spread the news to other mages to reunite for the queen's return, which would explain why the council would have never shared this information to social media prior to this. They could be afraid of retaliation from the hidden mages of media once they learned a rebellion truly existed against the current government. Radio's feathery tail waved in excitement and anticipation of the thought of all this potential activity. She had already learned so much just by skimming over the details concerning the four mages. The idea she got to be a part of this. Why would Frequency decide to pass this up and give it to her? Perhaps this responsibility being handed to her was a deliberate decision of her older sister, making up to her neglected younger sister. Radio knew she would have to thank the busy feline once this whole trip was over. This was a turn in the right direction. She continued reading, only to find the previous file was the last exciting part in the stack of files. The owls had been the last sighted mages in media seven generations ago, if not longer, according to known records. Apparently, as Radio made herself continue to read, a terrible storm had struck lightning in the capital several generations ago and set ablaze the former capital's structure burning most of the archives and libraries that contained all the information prior to the capital upgrading to higher levels of technology. That was the last exciting thing she read, as exciting as the destruction of buildings could be anyway. The rest of the files contained information that was supposed to be for frequency. Travel costs, scheduling, limitations, reports, and other documents on things Radio would see in the castle and on her mission. The more Radio tried to read, the more words blurred and seemed to repeat themselves. She tried one more sentence and then huffed, shaking her head. It was too much. 
I'll find this all out when I meet them. This is a servant's job. Radio found herself murmuring out loud. She pushed the files onto the floor of the carriage and sprawled out lazily on the bench. She sighed as she stared ahead. It was impossible to be comfortable in a small carriage, with the cat pulling it as quickly as possible and not as comfortably as possible, across the bumpy road. She shifted her shoulders and kneaded her claws into the bench for a while, closing her eyes. Perhaps she could catch up on the sleep she missed when the carriage first pulled up to the house. Things were already moving so quickly. She thought it possible she should enjoy the slight discomfort of the road while that was the only issue with which to find fault at the moment. She assumed so, at least, until she saw the hovering bot flying past her carriage. The highly pitched noise from the propellers of the surveillance device made her ears flatten against her skull, and she stared at the object indignantly as it recorded the carriage for a while before flying away. It didn't look like any device she knew from the capital. The black outer shell wasn't traditional to media's technology at all. Radio pondered about the red light emanating from it as well. The device barely looked to be connected to its propellers. Perhaps the capital had modified its technology for once. The device left her thoughts when she began thinking about the capital. The only thing worse than being watched was actually being in contact face-to-face -face with any social cues. Her parents always had accomplished both visiting and conducting appointments at home. It seemed frequency socially maneuvered this way, too. Radio was just to sit and listen in the back, which had worked well for her, since they usually never talked about subjects she found interesting. That was all about to change, though. Radio's claws flexed with the trepidation of meeting people by herself, but she was determined to persevere. Her servants had implied she would be with someone at all times, which meant they would be handling any issues, whether they be discomforts or challenges. The small feline stretched out her limbs one more time along the bench and drifted off to sleep. Radio's eyes fluttered open at the movement of the carriage slowing down. While she imagined she had only fallen asleep for a few heartbeats, she looked out the window and saw they were already approaching the capital gates. Her eyes rounded. She hadn't been to the castle since she was a kitten. It looked even bigger than she remembered it to be, which was unusual for memories of being young. The excitement began to pound in her ears as she tried to take in the sights, the citizens, and the buildings. Here she was as a grown cat, by herself. It was beyond just excitement. Her tail waved and rose as she leaned up against the window pressing her paws against the strong glass as they drove past the residential district. She sat back on the bench, kneading the fabric of the cushion as her driver padded through the city. Now, she was stuck thinking about the castle. It was already in sight. She would have to meet new people and introduce herself to them. The small feline had never had to introduce herself, as it was either her parents or an announcer. But perhaps there would be an announcer at the castle. Of course there would be an announcer at the castle. Radio would only have to inspect the scene and begin her mission. That would be just fine. She really was worrying too much now. She took her paws off the cushion and looked out while she passed the market district. The high-quality fashion accessories and clothing on the shoppers were phenomenal. Radio gushed at the sight of them, loving the glamour, and hoped she'd have time for exploring the districts too. The carriage went past the surveillance district, a territory that defined the rest of media's government. Radio peeked out the window to see the cameras were watching her as much as she was watching them, except at many more angles. It brought back the thought of the device that recorded her carriage on the way, making her turn away completely. She stayed out of sight from the windows until the carriage pulled up to the castle after that. She hadn't realized she had been holding her breath until they reached the large arched double doors, where a ferret was waiting outside. The small animal looked at Radio's arrival with so much seriousness and concern, it put a knot in Radio's stomach. She hesitated to leave the carriage. The serval driver had other ideas, and pulled the carriage to a complete stop and put on the brakes, making the door automatically open. Radio clenched her jaw before she let out the breath she had again been holding, and slowly climbed out of the carriage. 
She stretched her paws onto the steps leading her to the ferret and the double doors and made sure she was holding a firm expression. The ferret bowed at her approach, addressing her. Ahem, the radio star. It is my honor. The ferret's accent in speaking feline was quite cute, causing radio to lose the severity of the situation. She smiled as the ferret led her towards the castle, their tails waving in sync. The two passed through a small flap within the double doors and made their way down the giant ornate hall of the castle's magnificent grand foyer. Radio's eyes rounded as she took in the intricate details and beauty of the anteroom, but her attention was brought back to the ferret upon hearing the animal speak again. Enterprise is waiting for you. I believe you're the first to arrive here. The other two are on their way. The ferret nodded. Radio blinked. Maybe she should have read more than just the papers on the mages and magic. The reports probably contained all the information she needed to know about these other two, and this ferret probably assumed she had read the entire packet. Rightfully so. Radio chuckled lightly, hoping the ferret wouldn't notice her hesitance. <laughs> oh, good. I can't wait. I am looking forward to meeting them both. Radio gave a nod to further the sentiment and swallowed. Radio carefully glanced behind her, her gaze drawn through the window to see if the carriage still might be there in order for her to retrieve the papers, but the driver had already departed. There was no hope for that now. Radio sighed and followed the small mammal down the foyer, her tail slumped. The ferret took Radio to an office where a warm-colored falcon was walking along an archive wall stacked to the ceiling with files and documents. Sir Enterprise, the radio star is here. The ferret spoke softly, dipping her head to the tall avian. He seemed surprised, but nodded to her. Radio raised her chin, wondering if he was judging her for coming instead of her sister. She then focused her attention on looking around the room. She saw a few of his feathers scattered across the floor. She tilted her head, narrowing her eyes, and stared back at him. Hello, Sir Enterprise. Are you, um... The falcon chuckled, watching her gaze. He pushed the feathers behind his desk with his talon. Oh, with the stress of this ordeal concerning the king, I believe I've begun to molt early. The bird dismissed the ferret with a slight flutter of his wing and turned to face radio. You must have so many questions. Or perhaps none at all. I don't believe we've ever had the opportunity to meet each other. My log says I was to be meeting the frequency. Frequency, yes. Radio clamped her jaws shut when her words came out more snappily than she intended and continued in a more polite tone. Um, my older sister was unable to come, not feeling too well herself. Likely over all of this as well, I imagine. I came instead. <sighs> my name is Radio, titled under nobility as a star with one sapphire row, the youngest in my family. She tried her best not to pause to breathe as apprehension twitched in her paws. I'm here to achieve the mission for her and to do anything I can to help, sir. She bowed her head, closing her eyes to keep them from showing the panic she felt as the bird's stare burned into her skull. Yes, well, I suppose any help would be appreciated. It is incredibly unfortunate your sister was unable to accept an assignment concerning such a dire calamity. The falcon's tail feathers flicked and Radio rose back up to look at him with wide eyes and burning cheeks. He didn't seem to have much respect for her or her sister, so openly expressing his attitude. She didn't even realize how strongly she felt about it either, until she had snapped out her sister's name. She took in a deep breath and released it as he walked around his desk and clipped a chip to the band around his neck. Radio understood his attitude was likely from the stress of the situation. However. The chip, it looked like he had picked up the computer chip from the ground, making her tilt her head again as the raptor led her outside the room. The large bird walked with her down the hall, leading them further into the castle. Radio took in the sight of the beautiful architectural elements put into the structure. 
The ceiling was high enough that birds could likely fly and speak to each other without the ground animals being able to hear from below. There were also bars and handles along the stone walls for arboreal animals to walk through the halls undisturbed by any commotion below or in the sky. Radio was amazed at her burgeoning concept of the diversity among the staff. Her family only considered being tolerant enough as to have weasels and stoats in the house as their servants. Pictures is here! Radio jumped at the shout echoing through the entire corridor, looking behind her to see the ferret making the announcement on the other side of the hall. Radio sighed, wondering if the announcement was for one of the two she was supposed to meet. Radio flushed at her earlier disregard for the importance of the documentation. She regretted not reading the files particular to the other people she was to see and possibly even accompany. Her ears flicked, and she looked at Enterprise. By any chance, do you have a copy of the documents I was given on my way here? Radio swallowed. I, uh, might peruse them further before I have to introduce myself to everyone. Unless... There's no need for us to introduce ourselves. It isn't as though I didn't read the biographies in the files. <laughs> she dipped her head in shame when the tall falcon looked down at her. His eyebrow arched severely in judgment. Allow me to do so, miss. It is of no consequence. A smooth voice came from behind her, and she turned around to see a lean silver tabby tomcat only a few whiskers from her face. The fur on her spine rose as she eased back her eyes rounding as she looked up into his mixed-colored eyes, one blue and the other a burnt gold. She could only widen her own eyes at the sight of them. They were both beautiful eyes, crisp and sharp as they reflected the wisdom that came with his distinguished age. He was mature without appearing at all elderly. Radio held her breath as she admired the ice of his blue and the beautiful warmth of autumn in his gold, only then realizing she hadn't answered him. Hi! Hello! She blinked, trying to remember the ferret's words, realizing the ferret must have told him who she was already, and so quickly smiled at him. You must be pictures. Pictures of Clouder City, miss. Yes, I consult with the capital and the city surveillance departments, and bring back my findings to the council or their monitor director. It's a pleasure to meet you. He bowed his head. Radio stared down at him, shocked, but she quickly adjusted her naive thinking. Of course she'd have to work with someone from surveillance. He'd be a fine protector for both her and the other individual. Yet the idea that his occupation was to monitor subjects of land made her paws weak. She never liked the idea of being watched, nor of others being watched for that matter. But it seemed to be getting more evident that surveillance was a constant in media's reality as she continued running into all these monitor workers and devices. Of course it had to be a handsome Tom, too. Radio looked down when he rose back up to see her expression and hoped he hadn't seen her fluster. She decided to instead focus on his one black paw and one white paw, then at his back paws to see the colors were reversed. The pattern was so unique both blending into dark stripes up his legs and all the way up his neck, until Radio found herself staring into his eyes again. She startled at the sudden huff of indignation from the red raptor behind her. The same to you, sir. She managed to mule before introducing herself. I am the Radio Star, the youngest of my family. Unfortunately, my sister was unable to make the journey and accept the assignment. I was chosen as next of kin. She blinked, looking between him and Enterprise, unsure of what else to say. Was she leading the group? Should she be silent? What was she supposed to do? She swallowed and looked back at pictures. Uh, perhaps you know more about this than I do, considering the work you do. I don't desire to waste your time and tell you what you already know. <laughs> She gave a timid smile up at the Tom. Pictures chuckled, while Enterprise stared at Radio with more judgment, and this time, almost outright disapproval. His expression only made her extra appreciative that Pictures could laugh. Well, <laughs> quite funny about that, really. 
I had been off on an assignment when I was called into this mess. I only received the same folder of information you did. I imagine we both have the same amount of knowledge on what's happening, Miss Radio. Don't fret about that. His tail flicked. I'm looking forward to meeting Video as well. He then smiled at Radio. Perhaps we can go over what we've read and examine it all again before she arrives? Another girl. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Radio had worried about being the dead weight when it came to traveling with two tomcats. But she could easily connect with another lady like herself. She blinked in gratitude at his offer, knowing he probably figured out she hadn't looked over everything. That sounds quite reasonable. Thank you. The more we can gather from the facts and each other's knowledge, the easier this mission will be. She saw out of the corner of her eye Enterprise was scowling at her. Pictures turned his attention to the bird. He stepped closer to the avian, making radio blink with surprise as the silver tabby spoke. You know, you seem familiar, Enterprise. The bird's eyes hooded. Well, Pictures, my name's quite well known around these parts. I'm not surprised. The falcon's crest began to rise in the slightest. Radio looked at the two, taking a step back as Pictures answered him. No, I think I've seen something about you. A photo or something. Maybe a recording. The Silver Tom's voice seemed threatening. Radio might have believed it if his features hadn't been so schooled and calm. Radio gaped at the sudden change in atmosphere and mood. Had she missed something? Was there some exchange between them that totally flew over her head? She stifled a giggle at the idea that perhaps indeed something had flown over her head as she looked at the avian. Now was not a time to break the tension with a joke, though. Their annoyance might then be directed at her. Enterprise inhaled and clicked his beak, but as Radio eased back to listen to his response, she felt the ferret's paw rest on her front leg. The feline looked down at the mixed-colored mammal. The woman nodded up at her, smiling. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to wait for pictures to discuss your assignment in the drawing room while he finishes speaking with the Honorable Enterprise? She stepped past Radio moving down the end of the hall and then began to turn. Radio didn't wait a moment to let the ferret move out of her sight, knowing she would get lost and be stuck with the two arguing. Uh, yes, please, she murmured as she hurried after the smaller mammal, hoping the men weren't bothered by her paws padding against the marble flooring. <sighs> What's your name, miss? She now asked the servant, catching her breath as they walked down the next hall. Thankfully, it was shorter and smaller than the last one and the two turned onto a staircase to climb it. <laughs> Mabel, my lady. She answered Radio as they padded up to the next floor of the castle. Radio smiled at the simple name. She had expected everyone would have their verification from Media's council to work in the castle. It was assuring to know that there were those without titles even here, much like Radio's own servants. That's a lovely name. The feline nodded to further her opinion. Mabel gave her a small smile with a touch of surprise at the compliment and led her into a regal warm-colored drawing room as Radio thanked her. Radio climbed up on one of the large dark red divans and perched there. She let out a small sigh and then looked around the room after Mabel left. The walls were filled with beautiful books on ornately carved dark wooden shelves, and the floor was scattered with rugs atop the glossy wooden flooring. It was all very beautiful and nothing like any place Radio had ever been before. Her gaze drifted to the fireplace, which seemed to be the main piece and focus of the room. It had a giant stone border that looked decades old, with a large chain attached. Radio at first thought the chain would have started the fireplace, but then saw the lever that fed it, and the switch that ignited it, making her wonder all about the contraptions. How curious, she mused out loud. Pictures came into the room and started grooming his ruffled fur. My apologies, Miss Radio. He flicked his ears and came up to her. I have the digital files on my person about the mission. If you'd like me to transfer them to you, we can review them, he offered with a nod of his head. Radio realized he had no physical copies of what she needed. Most monitors worked completely in digital format with simulated screens. 
Radio blinked, realizing frequency and her parents likely all had these gadgets. But she didn't have them. Nor was she ever exposed to them. She blinked and shook her head. Uh, that's fine, pictures. Thank you, anyway. I usually prefer discussing it verbally, as it's much easier for me to comprehend that way. She smiled. The Tom blinked at her, flicking his left ear. It was the first time Radio noticed the nick in the side of it, staring at it before she focused on his response. Oh, I see. No, that's fine, Miss Radio. I find it quite a bit easier that way, too, actually. He smiled up at her in assurance, and then leapt up onto the other side of the divan to rest against the single armrest. Miss Video is coming here on foot. She is said to be in the area, so I'm not sure what the wait will be for her arrival. Radio frowned, not wanting to imagine the stress on the poor deer's pads, and listened carefully as pictures continued. But as for the mission... It seems we're waiting on video to find out the main objective. The council was very secretive with the information given out in the files, as all of what we read was nothing we couldn't have looked up in the database. Oh, that is strange. Radio pondered, tapping her dark paw pads against her chin. Uh, from what I read, I thought it was a bit odd that no one found it suspicious a spider monkey was wandering the castle, seeing as all the previous ties their species seemed to have with the mages. Picture's brow furrowed at her words, making her regret them immediately. He didn't hesitate to explain. Well, I'll try not to find fault with that so much since the report stated that there were no alerts of the mage on any of the monitors or surveillance until after the first explosion of the magic happened. All the images and recordings taken were performed manually when security ran to see the cause of such destruction. Pictures blinked again in shock of her previous ponderings, frowning. They really didn't get an opportunity to detect what species it was prior to the incident you know. Radio clenched her jaw, knowing it was likely in one of the files she hadn't read. I guess I overlooked that. There was so much else I needed to comprehend. She chuckled, shaking her head and putting her paw up against her head to try and hide the shame on her face from him. She really was going to blow this, and they hadn't even begun their mission yet. She took in a breath and released it. As long as they learned everything else that was going on together. She'd be up to speed enough to carry on with the assignment without feeling as though she was out of the loop with pictures, and this upcoming second companion video. As if on cue from her thoughts, Mabel stepped back in. Miss Video from the Rich Top Mountain region is here! The ferret bowed, backing up to allow the woman to enter. Radio's jaw dropped at the sight of Video. She was another feline a long-haired umber tabby with white paws and upper body patches all the way up to her chin, as well as below her nose. It wasn't the contrasting white and brown that caught Radio's attention, though. Her size was unbelievable, as well as the striking black marble stripes that stretched across her face and long furred pelt, darker than Radio's own black leggings and back. Even the fur around the cat's neck fell against her shoulders like a mantle having nearly every shade of brown, cream, and white in layers around her neck, and two black blotches up each side of her throat, which stood out from the white of her neck stunningly. Radio was sure that the cat was only a domestic feline, but Vidya was still about twice the height of her. She'd be surprised if even the Tom, pictures, reached the other young woman's shoulders. The giant tabby cat prowled into the room, her giant thick tail matching the cat in length, Radio's eyes rounded into blue spheres when Video turned her dark sienna eyes onto her. Hmm, the radio star. The words were a declaration. It's an honor. The feline's voice echoed through the room as she bowed down and flattened her ears in respect to Radio, making Radio's jaw drop even more. Pictures let out a chuckle and turned away as though he hadn't noticed, making Radio quickly compose herself and clamp shut her mouth, addressing the majestic feline. Miss Video, a pleasure. She squeaked, removing any dignity she still had left. Video didn't seem focused on the lack of poise, though. Radio could almost convince herself the giant cat hadn't noticed. The situation we're dealing with is very dire, 
but I could not have asked to be a part of a better team to complete this objective we face. It's an honor to meet you both, truly. Video dipped her head to pictures, too, who nodded to her before she turned back to radio. I am sure by having both fresh and experienced minds, we'll be able to tackle this mission wholeheartedly. Radio had assumed Video was going to be another tech-savvy feline who hid behind monitors and was going to enjoy Pictures' company and protection as much as herself. She was now more convinced she and Pictures would both be hiding behind Video against any danger as they started this mission. Well, thank you, Video. I can say the same to you. She dipped her head, and Pictures did the same. It seemed neither of them wanted to hop down from the divan knowing the giant cat would tower over them as soon as they were at her level. Radio couldn't take her eyes off the majestic brown feline once she brought her head back up and hoped that the cat wouldn't be disturbed by the staring. Pictures spoke, however, causing Radio to look over at him as he rose up on his paws. I'm looking forward to working with you, Video. It's a pleasure to work with someone of your training and knowledge of the situation. Radio sank. More information she should have read in the reports. However, Video seemed surprised by his words. May I ask you to elaborate, sir? The giant tabby asked. Uh, well, pictures hopped down now. Both Video and Radio's gaze intently fixed on him as he approached Video. Your father was solely responsible for directing the mission and takedown against the last sighted mage, Fantascope. I would only imagine you were well trained by him to face this since you still reside with your parents, yes? Video paused, then lifted up her chin. <sighs> you are correct. I am residing in the mountain region with them since I have yet to be transferred to the capital. Video's brow then furrowed. But it does not necessarily mean I was trained to face threats against magic. Such training is not a mandated assessment. Picture's ear flicked, and Radio blinked at him as his brow arched. That's true. You have a fair point, and for that I apologize, Miss Video. I suppose it was wrong for me to assume you were educated in the subject after all. Picture sat, his tail wrapping around his paws. Radio let out a sigh at the possible insult. It seemed like Enterprise hadn't been the only one looking for a fight. The more Radio thought about it, Pictures had been the one to instigate the argument between himself and the raptor, as it was in the first place. Radio was relieved Video seemed so level-headed. Perhaps she could mediate any communication the two might have in the future. Hmm, quite. Video only answered, and now began taking in the room's appearance just as Radio had. The smaller feline blinked at the similar action and it made her what she might find out about these two on their journey. They were already so interesting. Radio respected Video for her strength and professionalism already, as the giant cat looked quite young, but already had incredible determination in her eyes. Then there was Pictures, who seemed to be very bold and headstrong, knowing what he wanted and how to get it. Radio sighed, wondering how they might be describing her in their heads, knowing it was likely much less exciting than what she thought of them. I miss radio, video, and pictures. Another voice sounded from the doorway of the drawing room. It was another cat. Radio turned to see the bulky dark brown and white Tom waiting, kneading his large paws against the wooden flooring with nervousness. He still remained in the doorway while a lighter tan tabby walked in, continuing up to the party with her amber eyes gleaming. Hi, you three. You must be here for the assignment. The two cats matching bright eyes made Radio smile. It looked like they were siblings, both with the same ruff around their neck and orange eyes. Even how they carried themselves looked quite similar. The tan tabby sat with her paws tucked underneath her as she introduced herself and the tom both. I'm Recorder, and this is Tape. We're here to bring you to the surveillance department to set you up before we send you out on your mission. Their verification, or titles, was impressive too. These two were ones to talk to and get information from if she couldn't from pictures or video. Oh, it's a pleasure. Radio purred, smiling. I am the radio star, and these are my companions. 
pictures from Clouder City, and video from the Rich Top Mountain region. Radio turns to gaze at the silver and brown tabbies below her, beaming at how well the introduction went and that she remembered where they were from. She tried not to look too proud at her words and hopped down from the bench when tape and recorder approached the three. Tape bowed his head in respect and then brightened as he lifted his face back up. What an honor! The chosen three! The dark Tom looked from radio to video and pictures. Everything about what we're facing can be explained in the surveillance room. It shouldn't take too long to catch you all up with what your assignment is. It really is a pleasure. <laughs> we're so glad you could make it here in good time. He stopped to catch his breath, then gave a nod. <clears throat> Please, follow us. He turned on the back pad of his paw, walking out of the room. Recorder chuckled and nodded at the group to follow him. Radio gave a small smile, optimistically anticipating everything would go as well as she hoped, and quickly followed the bulky Tom, Tape. She only stopped to smile at her new companions, video and pictures, who were also trailing behind her with interest. <laughs>